Hi there, welcome to you some DIY, my name's Ben. This is the first part of a Home Assistant series on the channel, where we're going to set up and get started with Home Assistant from scratch. Okay, hi there, my name's Ben. Um, so just a little bit of an intro into this video on this series, really. Um, so I've been using Home Assistant from 2017. Maybe a little bit before that, I can't really remember. Um, used it in anger, used it quite a lot on Raspberry Pis over the years. Um, and kind of fell out, with, fell out of love with it a little bit, probably about a year ago. Um, I wasn't spending enough time with it to keep it updated, etc, etc. So, that's my story. I'm still paying to Nabucasa into the monthly subscription. Been doing that since it came out. Um, so I'm going to get restarted with Home Assistant in my house. I thought it'd be a great opportunity to do a bit of a guide. So the thing that really got me interested again um, in Home Assistant specifically, so I've been doing my home automation using the Alexa app, uh, which is good, you can do more and more of it now, but you still don't have that offline and extra flexibility you get with Home Assistant. So the offline control you get with Home Assistant and you can do more and more and more with different products, etc. on Home Assistant. But the thing that got me kind of latched back on and wanted to get going again was this. So this is the Sky Connect. So in the past, I've tried to connect uh, different Zigbee devices across the house, so motion sensors, temperature sensors, and it's been a bit of a nightmare, been a bit of a pain, and it really kind of put me off the whole thing. Um, so I've seen this, what it could offer, and obviously with Matter coming along, I know it doesn't come with Matter uh, integration capability yet, but that is coming, but I thought this would be the great opportunity to get back into Home Assistant, get things set up, um, and when I was doing it previously, I didn't have this channel. So I thought it would be a good opportunity just to step through setting up basically as a beginner again. Um, so this video I'm going to set up, go through a full setup using a Raspberry Pi. So I've got Raspberry Pi 4. Um, I'm going to go through the full setup of getting it up and running. I'm going to connect it to my uh, local network with Ethernet. So use an Ethernet cable. Um, I'm only going to use a micro SD card. Uh, I previously have got it working using an SSD, um, but I use that SSD now for something else. So I'm going to set it up a micro SD card. That was one of the issues previously around stability using SSD cards. Um, I'll use the best quality one I can find that I've got, so that does make a difference. Um, but yeah, we'll step through that now. I'm going to jump over and show desktop view, kind of what to download, where to download, and how to get set up. Okay, so we're going to step through the required steps now to get Home Assistant installed on this Raspberry Pi. So there's a few things you need to do first of all. So the Home Assistant website is brilliant in terms of telling you what to do. All the guides are on there. It's perfect. So really, you can follow this step by step at home-assistant.io and then go to the installation section. Uh, a couple of bits of software you'll need on your PC that you're doing it from. I'm doing it for a Windows PC. So you need the SD card formatter which formats an SD card, <laughs> as it says. Um, so that's that. And you need the program or the, the software called Etcher. Uh, Belina Etcher, I guess you pronounce that as. So those two um, bits of software there. I think Etcher is linked, yes it is, on the Home Assistant site here. Um, but they're the bits of software you'll need to get started. So, first of all, I have plugged my micro SD card into my PC. So whenever you do that, if you've got um, a separate uh, card reader, you need to plug that into your PC so then you can format the SD card. So I've done that. It's obviously picked it up here. It's an old boot drive, probably from a Raspberry Pi previously that I've used. Um, so I'm going to format that now. I've given it the name of Houston. Uh, Houston. In fact, I will do that as Houston underscore HA, Home Assistant. And I'm going to format that SD card now. Just confirm that there. Excellent. Right, so I've got a formatted SD card ready to flash the Home Assistant um, operating system onto. So I can get rid of the card format now. Um, things have changed slightly since the last time I did one. So previously you would download the image from the Home Assistant site, or I think it was from a GitHub site, um, and then you would flash that onto the memory card. What, they do, what they've given now is the capability to flash directly from the URL, which you could probably do before, but I, I didn't previously do. So on the Home Assistant website, you've got right the image to your boot media. Um, you've got the URL there. So we're just gonna follow this guide down basically. 
So I've got Etra open here. I'm going to click on Flash from URL. Paste that into there. So what will happen now is when I click on OK, I think it'll just download it and then it'll flash it onto the card for us. So if I click OK here. So I think what's happening now is it's actually downloading the software in the background. Oh, sorry, the image from the um, from the GILB site. So we'll pause there and I'll come back once that's downloaded. Okay, we're back. It took less than a minute to download that there. Um, so you can see it's got it there, 2.15 gigabytes of um, space there, or the, the, the download is that size, which matches up with the with, with the Home Assistant website over here. So we're going to follow this guide down. Basically what you need to do now is select the target where you want to uh, install or um, write this image to. So I'm going to select target there. And I've got this um, on the E drive here. This 128 gigabyte memory card. E drive. I've selected that now, and that's going to write that image that's downloaded from the GitHub site onto that uh, SD card. Okay, um, so I speed it through that a quick time lapse to show you it, um, it working got stuck at a couple of points but um, especially on that 45 minute mark it went up really high uh, but yeah that's done it a few minutes it flashed onto there now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the SD card out of the uh, reader plug into my PC and plug it into the Raspberry Pi okay so I've got the memory card out of the computer now, out of the reader. So I've used a 128 gigabyte uh, SD uh, micro SD card. It's a Samsung Evo one. It's probably not the best quality you can get, um, but it's the best I've currently got that's spare at the moment. So all we're going to do now is obviously take our Raspberry Pi, and we've got the SD card um, slot on the bottom. So I'm going to pop that into there. Um, That's in there now. Um, I'm going to set it up just in my desk area here. I'll flip the camera around and show you. But as I mentioned previously, I am going to Ethernet, use an Ethernet cable to connect this, um, just for kind of convenience and stability, really more than anything. Um, so we'll switch the camera around now. I'll just show you where it is, where I've got it set up and working. Okay, just to show you here, we've got the uh, Raspberry Pi there, set up, plugged in, uh, with the power going under the desk. And I've got it plugged in via Ethernet into my Unify switch on there. Um, so it's been up and running now for about two minutes. So we'll try and find the IP address of the device, browse to it, and see what's going on. Okay, so I find, managed to find my um, my device. I use um, Unify Ubiquity for my network. Um, so I'm able to use a network application just to find all my devices. So I can see it down here. It's named as Home Assistant. It's got an IP address there as well. Um, you can use different tools and applications to find IP addresses on your network of different devices. Um, but this is the way I've done it for mine. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this IP address. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to come into this browser. Open a new browser window. Okay, so I'm going to paste the IP address now into my URL there. So HTTP. 192.168.1.198 and then use the port of 8123 after that. Click enter. And this should load this up. So obviously it's it's using that flashed image on the Raspberry Pi, installing the operating system on there. Um, so it, what we're gonna do now is step through the home assistant home assistant setup uh, from scratch basically. So let's just set this up anyway um, and step through this. So I'm going to go Ben Hewson. I'm pretty sure my original is that. And let me just pop in these details. Obviously, you need to do the same for yourself. Okay, create an account. Uh, name of your home assistant installation. So I've got, I'll keep it as, as default as home. And click on detect there. 
so I'll just I'll just choose my exact location because it's probably Okay, so that's my locations uh, uh, checked there. I'll obviously blur that out so you can't see where I live. <laughs> uh, so country GB, time zone Europe, that's fine. Celsius and kilograms, exactly what I want it as. So we'll go next. Anonymize, yeah, I don't mind sending my uh, usage data. I click next. Okay, so it's obviously auto detecting certain things i've got um on the network so you can see i've got sonos um i do have the Xiaomi gateway which i'm probably not going to use um i've got blink okay so we'll leave it as it is like that um we won't set these other ones up just yet so i'm going to click on finish and that is it done so that's home system installed as an operating system um, on my Raspberry Pi that we've just done now. So you can see, you can probably do that in a few minutes basically, it takes hardly any time, really very, very little effort. Um, for when I first used to do it, when I used to install it, it used to be a bit more manual, doing things more manually. They've done a great job here in, in making this a much more kind of automatic automated service. Um, so yeah, so I'll, um, I'll get a couple of things just checked just to make sure that my network settings are all all right. And then we'll come back and look at exactly what we can do first. Okay, as I mentioned, we're all set up. Home Assistant has, um, is all configured as a very basic install at the moment. It's running on the network, um, so it's kind of ready to get things configured on there. Um, because this is just a starter video, just the, the basic setup, what I will do is I'll just go through a couple of integration setups. So what I'll do is I'll go through one of the, one of the discovered configurations, uh, uh, well, discovered integrations, and we'll configure that and then we'll find another one that I know is on the network that we can set up. So the one we'll go for um, from an auto discovered perspective is the Blink. So I've got multiple Blink setups on the property. Um, I've got three modules, um, including one that's got a doorbell connected to it. So I'll do this now. So I'll click on the configure button uh, within here. So let me just show you how I got there. There were two ways you can get here. So if you click on the notifications on the bottom left, it will alert you there when it's discovered new devices. So you can click on check it out and it will bring you to this integrations page. You can also go, so if you're on the home page, on the overview page, if you go down to settings in there and then go into uh, devices and services, this will bring you to the same page. So once you're in there, click on the one that you're gonna configure, which for me is Blink. And in here, hopefully I can remember my username and password. So from memory, I think this tries to do some multi-factor authentication, I think. Um, okay, maybe not for this one. So some of the services or integrations require further authentication, um, but this one doesn't look like it is. So this has obviously found all the different cameras I've got. So you can see all, all the different cameras I've got. So I've got the Houston doorbell there, porch camera, bar camera, etc., etc. I don't have any areas set up yet. So what I will do is let me just check to see if there's any obvious ones I can put them in. So there is, so I can put that one in there, that one in the kitchen, conservatory, I can add a new area. So if you add in devices like this in, you can click on there, add a new area, and it will ask you to specify a new area. So I'm gonna call that conservatory, and click that, add. Um, extension, that is just in the living room, office. Again, I'll click on add a new area, and that is office. So I'll just nip through all these. I'll put these as outdoor for now, because I'm not sure what I'll do with the outdoor stuff yet. Outdoor. 
go. I'll come back later and I'll finish off adding those there. So I'm gonna what I'm gonna do once I've done that, I'm gonna click on finish. And you can see now that that's done. It's configured and it's show, it's not showing as now discovered. Uh, you can also see that little cloud icon there. That is, as it says there, it depends on the cloud. It's not just a local service. It does depend on the cloud service. So if I click on the overview section now, we should see, yeah, we do. We will see all the cameras now. Um, so it's showing the snapshot I've got in the Blink application for each of the cameras. Um, but that's added them in and I can click on that and I can see the information and settings regarding that. So that's the Blink integration set up in a very basic uh, way, um, but it's, it's the, basically added in there, ready for me to now configure and use them in my Home Assistant instance. Okay, so the second integration we'll set up um, as part of this, this video is the, um, so if I go back to here and go back into de devices and services, um, if it doesn't automatically find the one um, that you think you've got on your network, uh, what you need to do is click on this add integration button at the bottom right here, this blue button. So if I click on that, and what I want to add in is my Hive system. So it's a British Gas Hive system. Again, it's got the cloud uh, symbol there, depends on cloud. So this is where I've got my heating um, and some, um, I do have some smart plugs as well as part of that, that Hive setup. So if I click on that. Again, I'll pop in my username and password. So this is a multi-factor authentication I'm talking about. This has sent me um, an, a text message to my mobile phone um, with a, with a two-factor code on. So I'm gonna put that in now. I'm gonna submit that. And I'm gonna enter a name for Houston Hive. and add that in there. So you can see here that again, like it did with the Blink setup, it's pulled in all the devices I've got and it's wanting me to put in an area for each of these. So I can do this now, or I can do this at a later date, um, but let me just see if there's any really obvious ones. So obviously we've got the kitchen radiator, is in the kitchen, porch, I haven't got the setup yet. Uh, thermostat is in the living room, uh, bedroom, we haven't got that yet, sitting room, we've got that one there. So you can see there it's got some of the lights, some of the bulbs, and um, I think that's on that sitting room there. That's what that's um, a plug as well. Uh, so again, I'll come back to these at another point, and I'll put in the um, put in the areas that, that are definite at some point. So there we go. We can see that it's configured. It's got it uh, showing configured there on the right hand side. And then if I click on the overview button again, we should hopefully see it. Populated. There we go. Yes. So we can see we've got each of the different um, each of the different thermostats there. I've got the um, radiator thermostat valves. Each of them there. Um, and probably, if I have a look somewhere, there might be the plugs. Yeah. So these are the these are the different um, high bulbs that we've got here. Uh, there's only one of them that's online currently, which is that one there. Um, but yeah, that's another integration added in, um, another cloud one that I've logged into and it's pulled in all that configuration automatically. Again, ready for us to further configure and tweak as necessary. Okay, just one last thing just to show you before we uh, we finish off. So from the overview page here, just to show you, if, just to have a look at the your instance of Home Assistant, uh, that's running on the Raspberry Pi. So if you go down to the settings section here, you click on the about section, it tells you there what version you're on, what supervisor supervisor version you're on, operating system, etc. So you can check that there if you need to check it. So we go back one, 
Um, if we then go to system, um, if you're not sure what hardware you're on, you can click there. Obviously we've mentioned before, it's a Raspberry Pi 4, we're on the 64-bit version. Um, we can see the storage used for 2% of that. So there's a 128 gigabyte car, but obviously not all of that will be usable via the, for the operating system. Um, but you can see that there. Um, and then in here as well, you can change, if you, if you did set it wrong when, during setup, you can change around obviously like the unit system or your time settings, etc. if you need to do that in there. Um, but this is much better than it used to be in terms of the way the settings are held, uh, navigating the settings, much more clearer, much more easier to use. Um, so they've definitely improved a lot, a lot of things within the operating system there. Okay, so there's a the home assistant assi uh, system all set up now, the instance all set up on the Raspberry Pi 4. Um, really, really easy to use uh, and to set up. Very intuitive, much more intuitive than it used to be. Um, so, but we've got a very basic system set up with two integrations kind of uh, manually done. Um, the one, the auto discovered one with the Blink security system. Um, so that's done really easily. And then obviously the integration that I selected for the Hive setup, which used the two-factor authentication um, with your account settings to authenticate use it into the Hive system you what well, I have um, to bring in obviously the heating system, the thermostatic radiator valves, and some of the uh, light bulbs we use. So it was really easy to do, really simple to do, um, looking really good. So that was a kind of whistle stop tour on how to set up Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi 4. Um, as I mentioned, it's really easy to do, really simple to do. Um, with those couple of bits of software on your machine. Um, I'll put links um, and everything required in the description that I've used in this video um, to, to where they are on the Home Assistant website and also the Etcher download link and the SD card format download link. So this is just part one of a series that I'll do for the Home Assistant. Um, I'm gonna go step by step through my build, how I've done it, how I'm gonna set it up. So on the next one, I'm going to set up, um, show you how to set up a new dashboard um, within the home within Home Assistant, just to show certain things that you want to what you want to see within within the view on Home Assistant, because it can become quite a bit messy if you just use that one page. So the next video we'll do um, the dashboard setup, just to make things a little cleaner when we're when we're looking at things um, and set up those areas. So we'll set up the areas for the different rooms. Um, we'll then move on to things like the uh, Sky Connect. So I'll set all the Sky Connect in a future video, um, and then I'll add some further integrations into my Home Assistant instance uh, that I know are on my network and show how that works. Okay, so hopefully this video has been useful. If you're looking at setting up your own Home, Assist Home Assistant instance for the first time, um, hopefully it's been a useful guide for yourself. Um, if it has been good and you've liked the video, give it a thumbs up, give it a like. If not, for any reason, give it a dislike. Um, any questions or comments uh, that you might have, drop them in the comment section and I'll get back to anything that anyone puts in there. Um, and if you want to follow this journey along with our Home Assistant build, click that subscribe button and we'll see you on the next one.